Welcome to day number six of 30 days of CNCF project. And today we are going to talk about a lightweight and yet powerful proxy, Envoy proxy. A proxy that got wide varieties of capabilities and can be integrated into edge proxy, service proxy, and even service mesh. So today we are going to talk about what is Envoy, how to use it, some use cases, and demo. Let's go. Envoy is an open source edge and service proxy designed for cloud native application. So first of all, it's a proxy. It got a wide variety of proxy capabilities and we are going to deep dive into them later in this video. It can work in edge proxy, meaning at the edge of your network. So getting ingress requests and being as a proxy gateway to your own application and also as an egress, making all your requests outgoing from your application to be proxy by Envoy. And also it's a service proxy, so you can put it in front of any one of your microservices within your own network. And it's also designed for being cloud native application, meaning it works with large scale and really large volume of network and request. And this is amazing, but if we will take a look about Envoy Vision, we will understand a little bit why Envoy is a little bit different from any other proxy out there. Envoy was created initially by Lyft, and it got like a very clear vision of what, what it tries to solve. Let's take a look about the Envoy's vision and understand that. The network should be transparent to applications, when network and application problems do occur, it should be easy to determine the source of the problem. So we got two aspects. One is the separation between network and applications. We do want our application to be focused on the business logic and the unique value the application can provide to the organization. And networking should be something that some other components are responsible of. And this is when we want to separate them and make networking to be transparent to the application. And the second part of the sentence is most operational and troubleshooting. So when we have a problem, we do want some tools to help us to determine, is it an application problem or is it a networking problem? And Envoy tries to do that too, making sure that we know very quickly where the problem is and how to solve it. Let's understand how Envoy works in eye level and what proxy capabilities it got. So like any other proxy, it gets requests from downstream clients. Clients can be uh, users using their browser and actually sending requests to our website or our APIs. And it can be also other systems sending requests to our system. All of them will get into the proxy. Then the proxy does its magic. It can do TLS termination, it can do filtering and activate a lot of proxy capabilities, we are going to list them in a few minutes. And then while it does the magic, it sends the request to the right target or the right cluster on the other side. So we're just doing, getting incoming requests, do the magic, sending the outgoing request into the right target. And this is the magic of the proxy. When we are talking about what's going in the middle, there are a lot of capabilities that can be activated in the proxy. For example, L3 or L4 filter architecture, we can do some filtering to our request getting from TCP or UDP, for example, like buffering, rate limiting, uh, routing and forwarding to different targets based on different characteristics. Uh, it can support HTTP 1 and HTTP 2 termination. So if we got our own application in HTTP 1 or HTTP 2 and we get a request from a different protocol, it can um, do a bridge between those protocols and then get requests in one and send internal requests on the other. Uh, HTTP layer seven routing based on characteristics of the request itself. gRPC support, there are not many proxies supporting gRPC, which is really cool. Service discovery and dynamic configuration. Envoy can work as a mesh of different envoys that can work together. We are going to see it later today. A health checking, it also can check the targets and based on that decide how to route your request to. Uh, advanced load balancing, which is really cool. You can add and activate some uh, load balancing algorithms 
and decide how do you want load balancing to work with Envoy. Also front and edge proxy support. We talked a little bit about this before, but it can down some rate limiting for specific users that will allow you to put Envoy at the edge and not close to your service. It can work in both operational mode and also best in class observability, meaning that you get observability out of the box when you work with Envoy. So getting requests from one side and sending on to the other can sound very simple, but when you add the chain of filtering and chain of proxy and activities in it, it can be a little bit complex. And this is what Elvo tries to solve to make sure network is transparent and you overload the networking with the capabilities that you want to have in the networking and not in your own application. We see many times that people add code or networking code to their own application and that can cause some troubles and when you need to solve something you need to change the application to solve that. After we understand how Envoy works in a very high level let's go one step deeper and for that I want us to take a look about this diagram explaining how a single instance worker fed of Envoy looks like. So from the left side, we can see the downstream client request going into Envoy a worker instance. And in the worker thread, we got like two manager. One is the listener manager responsible for getting the request. And on the other side, we can see the cluster manager responsible for managing the cluster or the targets of the proxy. So the requests go from the downstream, the listener gets it, it does anything regarding the connection with the client, for example, TLS termination, some filtering, and then it passes the request to the cluster manager responsible to manage the cluster targets, for example, which targets are healthy or not, what we should apply in terms of load balancing, and from that point, the cluster manager will pass the request into the right target. This is only a single thread of worker of Envoy. But if we do want to scale, we can scale the thread and create much more scalable architecture of a single proxy, but it always goes the same simple flow of proxy request from one side to the other. If you do want to get one step deeper with understand the life of our request of Envoy, you can go into Envoy documentation. There is a page called a life of our request, which goes very deep into what happened in each step of the flow. I will not go that deeper into this video, but I will add a uh, link into the description. We understand how Envoy works when we got like single microservice and how a single proxy looks like. But when we need to apply Envoy to a large and scalable application with multiple and distributed microservices, it may look a little bit different and we may have wide varieties of use cases. So let's take a look and deep dive into them. The first one would be a service mesh. Service mesh means that we get an Envoy proxy for each one of our services. This is a very similar uh, application and architecture of how Istio uses Envoy. So we knew what we can see is that we get an Envoy for each one of our services. It's responsible to proxy incoming requests from clients. Clients can be, as I said, users, but also different microservices within our application, but also proxying outgoing requests and find the right target for us. We can see another architecture with uh, Envoy will be internal load balancer, meaning we got a single Envoy in our architecture and all of our services and microservices will send requests to it and Envoy will be responsible to distribute the request to the right services and instances. This is much more simpler uh, uh, architecture of Envoy. We do have a different architecture, which is the edge architecture. As we can see in here, Envoy is at the edge of our microservices architecture. On the left side, we can see edge ingress from other networks, meaning that we get requests from other networks and Envoy responsible to distribute them and proxy them into our internal network. And on the right side, we can see the same way as Envoy responsible to send them with requests outside of our network. It can be if we do want to have a proxy, it can be a se for security reasons, it can be also for operational reasons. Based on the reason that you may have, you may want to pick Envoy as your edge proxy. We do have also mixed variation. 
uh, for example, that we have ingress, egress, but also some kind of service mesh in our own application, it may look a little bit uh, um, as multiple variation of what we already use. We can also use Envoy to be like the edge ingress, but also be our service proxy for each one of our services. So Envoy is kind of flexible and we can use it for any uh, network architecture that we do want to use. We just need to pick and decide what do we want and based on that, understand what is the Envoy deployment and configuration that we want to have in place. There are hundreds or thousands of wide varieties of proxies and load balancer. Why should we pick Envoy over one of the other? So Envoy is designed to be very lightweight and very powerful, meaning it's designed to have an instance per your microservice instance. If we take a look about Kubernetes architecture, we do want to deploy Envoy per container for our own application. That will allow us two main things. One is to abstract the network and making the application to not care about networking because Envoy is so close to it, so it can offload the networking and make it them close to our application as possible. And the other thing is about troubleshooting and operations. As Envoy vision, we want to determine the reason of problems when they occur. And if Envoy is so close to the application, it will be easier for us to determine the problem. If our load balancer is some in other network components, the networking between the load balancer to our own application can be also a problem. So Envoy wants to do that. And because it's so lightweight and powerful, it allows us to create distributed architecture of Envoy and proxying within our own network. So it's ideal for service mesh and very distributed proxy architectures. Because Envoy is so well designed to run on a service mesh architecture, Istio picked it to be the sidecar proxy for Istio. Meaning for any deployment of Istio, Envoy would be part of it and will deploy against any one of the containers and pods you define with Istio. So Istio actually decide to implement the service mesh 1% over Envoy. And this is amazing because it allows you to get the power of Envoy without taking care of it. You can use the high level abstraction of Istio to do that. And this is exactly what we are going to see in the demo today. So let's move on to our demo. For the demo today, what we are going to do is deploy Istio as we did on the Istio demo in a few episodes ago. And what we are going to do is walk through through Envoy and see how it uses Envoy behind the scenes. So what I have in here is like, um, Istio with uh, uh, the book info application deployed. If you want to see uh, how to do that, go to the Istio video. We do have explanation with a Git repo there. With a few simple commands, you can deploy that on your own cluster, even a kind cluster. This is why I'm using for this video. And what we would see is that for each one of the pods, we do have two containers running. Uh, what I would do next is that I will use K9S and I will explore those containers. So let me move to the default namespace. This is where I've deployed the book info application and we do have two containers. So I would click enter and I would go to uh, this pod. And what I can see is that I have one Istio init container. This is the init that actually do the initialization of Istio, but I have also the Istio proxy. And Istio proxy, as you may guess, it's maybe a magic, but if we will click on it and we would go to the logs, what we will find out is that it's based on Envoy. So the Istio proxy, what it does, it's basically picking the configuration from Istio and then run the Envoy proxy in it. And we can see the last line, by the way, is the last line, not when I filter, just actually the last line of the proxy is that the Envoy proxy is ready. 
Uh, if we will explore the logs on the top, what we will see that what happens in here is that essentially Istio is starting to run, uh, it's applying the configuration, then it's going into the user local bin Envoy, which is actually Envoy. And from that point, Envoy is starting to run. We can see it's starting the proxy agent. This is the Envoy command that's actually running behind the scenes. So we are going to uh, maybe take a look on this file and understand how Istio is configuring Envoy to work together. Um, and we can see that everything here is Istio related configuration until Envoy proxy is ready. So anytime we will run a request against this service, Envoy um, sidecar proxy will take the request, will do whatever proxy configuration Istio configure it to do, and will pass it to our own application. And we saw that already on the Istio demo, so I wouldn't do that uh, today too. What I want is to go into the Istio proxy and see the configuration here. So now we are inside the Istio proxy um, container. I would go to etc. I think it's on Istio. And now we can see that we have like two directories. Let's go to the proxy. And we see that we have like a few configuration, gRPC bootstrap JSON and Envoy ref JSON. I will cut the Envoy ref JSON. And what we can see in here is a full Envoy configuration. Uh, it's a little bit long because generated by Istio. But in general, we can find out what is the name of the cluster, what is the node it's running on, bootstrap extension, state configuration. All of that is Envoy configuration. We haven't got into Envoy. By the way, we can maybe take a look on the profile later. Um, and then we can find out the Prometheus if we do need some observability uh, for that, etc., etc. All of that will be in here. We don't need basically to take care of that because Istio already taken care of that, but it essentially show you the power of Istio and Envoy together if you do want to use Envoy as a service. If you do want to explore more, I really highly recommend, first of all, or to deploy Istio or to do some Envoy tutorial to understand what the value Envoy can bring and how to configure it for your own use case. My recommendation is to pick up a tool like Istio that will help you to configure Envoy. And something last before we are done, we are going to add the Envoy sticker into day number six. And that's it for today. Thank you very much.